Hello everyone, my name is Jun Shakya. So I was watching the lockdown math videos of 3 blue one brown where he was teaching high school maths in a simple and intuitive way. And he showed so many satisfying intuitions that I couldn't resist making this video to show some of them to you. And anytime in this video, if you want to pause and ponder, feel free to do so. So the first one I'm going to talk about is this one. A squared minus B squared is equals to A plus B times A minus B. So obviously everybody knows this. Algebraically, we take the right hand side, we just distribute and multiply them one by one. Uh, the term in the middle gets cancelled out and all of a sudden we got A squared minus B squared. So we just did the algebra, but it's not really clear what actually happened. So let's do that intuitively, okay? For that, we will take a square of side length a, so that is a squared, and let's suppose that there is a square inside of it with a side length b. Now, let's subtract b square from a square, and I'm just gonna take that block, rotate it 90 degrees, and fix it right there. And we get a new rectangle with one of the side length a plus b and the other side length a minus b. And that's what happened when we did a square minus b square. How cool is that? Okay, now the other thing that I want to show is about trigonometric functions, specifically the cosine function. So we're gonna get our graphing calculator and plot out cos x. This is how the graph of cos x looks, where x as an input is 0, the value of cos is 1, when the value of x is pi halves or 90 degrees, the value of cos is 0, when the value of x is pi or 180 degrees, the value of cos is negative 1 and so on. And after 2 pi, it again repeats itself so it is periodic with the period 2 pi. Now let's try to mess around with this function and see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna take a variable omega and gonna multiply the input with that. And as you can see, as the input increases, the graph squishes along x-axis and as the value decreases, the graph diffuses along x-axis uh, until it gets to zero and then it starts to squish again. Now let's see what happens if I multiply the whole cosine function uh, with a variable let's say alpha. As I increase the value, the cosine wave scales itself in y axis and I can scale it to negative values as well. Uh, negative cos x is just cos x flipped because the original one becomes negative one and the original negative one uh, becomes one so it seems to be flipped. Okay now lastly let's try squaring the cosine function. So this is the graph for cos squared x, and if we compare it to the graph of cos x, uh, they look pretty similar to each other. The purple one is cos squared x, and the gray one is cos x. So maybe we can squish and scale that cos x so it'll be exactly equal to cos squared x. Let's try that. Uh, first, let's scale down cos x a little bit, and let's try shifting it a little bit upwards. Uh, okay, we are close. Uh, it looks a bit diffused, so let's squish it a little bit, and boom! Now these two are identical, and if you have learned this, you might remember it, we just verified one of the double angle formulas. Now you may have learned it as cos 2a is equals to 2 cos squared a minus 1, uh, but it's exactly the same thing. And similarly, we could do it for sine squared x as well. So this is how the sine wave looks, and if we square it, it also looks similar to the above expression, but it seems to be flipped. And previously, we had flipped the cosine function by adding a negative sign before it, so let's do the same, and there you go, they are equal. Uh, we verified this one as well, and if we move few things here and there, uh, we will get that cos 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Awesome! Now let's visualize this by geometry, uh, but for that you need to know the relation between the central angle and the inscribed angle of a circle both standing on the same arc. Uh, if you know this, great, but I'll quickly show you the proof anyways. So we will draw a circle with center O and then we're gonna draw an inscribed angle, angle I, and a central angle, angle C, both standing on the same arc AB. We will then draw a dashed line from the vertex of the inscribed angle passing through the center, so that we will get two different isosceles triangles whose equal sides are the radii of the circle. 
we will let the base angles of those two isosceles triangles be alphas and betas respectively. And also, let's suppose that the dashed line we just drew divides the central angle into gamma 1 and gamma 2. Now, in this part of the figure, it's obvious that the two interior angles opposite to the exterior angle sums up to become that exterior angle. So we will write down just that, uh, that gamma 2 is equals to beta plus beta. Uh, this will be our equation 1. And similarly, in the other half of the circle, gamma 1 will be equals to alpha plus alpha. Now that will be our equation 2. Now if we add both of those equations, we will get that gamma 1 plus gamma 2 is equals to alpha plus beta plus alpha plus beta. And if we take a look at this part of the figure, we see that gamma 1 and gamma 2 sums up to become the central angle. So we will replace the gamma 1 plus gamma 2 with C as the central angle. And from this part of the figure, we get to know that alpha and beta sum up to become that inscribed angle. So, we'll replace alpha plus beta with I as the inscribed angle. And after adding those, we proved that the central angle is 2 times the inscribed angle standing on the same arc. Uh, this also implies that the inscribed angle is half of the central angle also standing on the same arc. Now that you have recalled this, uh, we will also recall the trigonometric ratios for sine and cosine for a right angled triangle. So let that triangle be ABC. And if we make the reference angle as angle A, then AC will be our base or the adjacent side, BC will be the perpendicular or the opposite side, and AB will be the hypotenuse. And we know that sine A is the ratio of the perpendicular to the hypotenuse, cos A is the ratio of the base to the hypotenuse, and so on. And for our convenience, we will let the hypotenuse of the triangle to be one unit, uh, because then we can express the base as just cos A and the perpendicular as sine A. And there's actually a very nice way of visualizing the trigonometric functions with the help of a unit circle. A circle with the radius 1. Again, 3Blue1Brown has already made a great video about it which is linked below in the description. And coming back to our triangle, if we use the Pythagoras theorem here, we get that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equals to 1. Pretty neat, right? Okay, after recalling all of those, we will head towards the actual geometric visualization of the double angle theorem. So for that, we will again take a circle of center O and draw a triangle ABC with the longest side AB as the diameter of the circle and the third vertex C anywhere on the circumference of the circle. Here, AB is a straight line, so the central angle AOB is 180 degrees, making the inscribed angle ACB as 90 degrees. Hence, ABC is a right-angled triangle. We will again suppose the hypotenuse of the triangle to be one unit, uh, just for our convenience, and that will make the radius of the circle one half. Now, we will rotate the diagram, um, again for our convenience, and we see that it's a similar right angle triangle as the previous one, uh, where we also found out that the base of the triangle is cos A and the perpendicular is sin A, supposing that A is the reference angle. Nice! Uh, okay, now we will return back to our circle and be patient and just wait and watch, okay? Because we are going to be drawing a line from point C perpendicular to the diameter and touching it at the point D. Uh, it will divide our triangle ABC into two more right triangles. Now, for this triangle, if we make angle A as our reference angle, then to find the length of the base, we can use the formula for cos as base divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, the hypotenuse is itself cos A, so the base will be cos squared A. And for the other triangle, we will make the reference angle as angle B. So, Cos B will be base divided by the hypotenuse, and in this case, the hypotenuse is sine A. And to make our maths consistent, uh, we will try to get the value of angle B in terms of angle A. 
Uh, for that, we see that in triangle ABC, all the angles sum up to 180 degrees. Uh, we know that C is 90 degrees, so if we solve for the value of B, we will get the answer as 90 degrees minus A. We will substitute that in, and as cos 90 minus A is sine A, we will get that the base for that triangle will be sine squared A. And oh, look at that! We again proved that sine squared A plus cos squared A is equals to 1. Now, we will keep note of these values and find the value of AD in a different way. So AD is same as AO plus OD. Uh, we know AO is the radius, which is 1 half. And to find OD, uh, we will be drawing another line from C to O. And if you notice, uh, there is a central angle and an inscribed angle standing on the same arc BC. And as the inscribed angle is angle A, uh, the central angle will be 2 times A. And for this triangle, hypotenuse is the radius, um, which is again 1 half. And taking the reference angle as angle 2A, uh, we can say that cos 2A is base divided by the hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is 1 half, so the base OD is 1 half cos 2A. We will keep that in mind as well. And finally, we get AD as 1 half cos 2A plus 1 half. And if I factor out 1 half, uh, we get AD as 1 plus cos 2A divided by 2, uh, which is also equals to cos squared A. How cool is that? Hopefully, it was not that complicated. Uh, and we can very easily find the relation of sine squared A as well, uh, which is BD. And to find it, we know the radius OB is 1 half. Uh, we also found out that OD is 1 half cos 2A. So if we subtract OD from the radius, we will get the value of BD, uh, which is sine squared A, as 1 minus cos 2A divided by 2. Hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, do hit that like button. If you have learned something new, do share it to your friends so that they will get to know about it as well. And again, most of the things I showed in this video are the things that I learned from 3 blue and brown uh, just from his lockdown math videos. Link to the playlist will be down below. I also have a video explaining basic height and distance, uh, which you can watch by clicking the video on the right. And finally, have a great day, stay safe, bye bye.